Hey guys, this is Mr. Galoya again. Hey, we're on kind of a new subject, and you've got uh, you've got a new note packet here, and um, the topic really for the next few days, in terms of uh, the subject, is objects that get faster, and. Uh, this is a concept called positive acceleration. You know, we do it in our car all the time, you know, we make our car get faster. And, uh, and so I kind of want to explain a little bit about the equations and the graphs we get for that. So again, what you kind of need out then in front of you, uh, calculator, your notes, um, possibly maybe a ruler. Um, and so kind of let's get started so basically objects that get faster and this could be maybe like a car you know that you're getting faster you know you got your foot on the gas I mean it could be a bunch of different objects you know so what I've got is kind of this data table and I've got time here I've got 0 through 5 and then I have velocity in this case I've got meters per second could be in miles per hour We've got a blank column for position and a blank column for acceleration. Now, let's start with a velocity time graph. VT, me please. So, what we have then is the car is gaining speed here. It starts at zero, and every second the speed goes up by 10. Now, could you picture yourself maybe doing this in your car? You know, every second or so your car gets 10 miles per hour faster you got your foot on the gas you're getting faster and faster well let's start with this vt graph notice if our if our car gets 10 meters per second faster per second we get a nice little diagonal line here remember we like diagonal lines because we can get the slope we can do a lot of things kind of with that mathematically that's not too challenging so we really get a slope here now contrast this with the VT graph that we made really for the constant velocity vehicle so constant velocity VT graph is a horizontal line now notice we don't get horizontal lines anymore this would be an object traveling at the same speed it's not accelerating this is an object that's getting faster and faster so notice then we get this diagonal well one of the things then we can get with a diagonal is the slope right so we have 5 comma 50 and we have basically 0 0 our slope then would be 50 minus 0 that'd be meters per second and the time would be 5 minus 0 in seconds okay we get five, uh, 10 meters per second per second we kind of already knew that didn't we that the car is getting faster every second by 10 units right look at your units here meters per second per second so we've got two time units really in the denominator here that really then is like meters per second squared and that's kind of a hallmark of an accelerative sort of idea distance per time per time now what we can do then is say well our slope really we said was equal to a change of y over a change of x in this case we have a change of a velocity over a change of time right and what we can do then is we can say while well, this delta really means a final velocity minus an initial velocity and we're going to call this time unit we'll just call it t for a time unit and we're going to say then that slope we're going to call that slope then the acceleration and that's given the symbol a so the acceleration which is the slope on a velocity time graph the acceleration is the change of velocity with respect to time how my velocity is changing if we have a car that's accelerating at a greater value we have a higher slope if we don't have our foot on the gas as much you know we're not going to have as big a slope here so let's take this sort of formula here acceleration equals the change of velocity over time and let's kind of re finagle the variables here let's put the t on the other side we have vf minus vi equals at 
Okay, and then let's put, let's kind of put the VI on the other side. Okay, now look what we have here. This looks very similar to Y equals MX plus B, right? So our final velocity or our velocity idea, our final velocity we might get then is our Y variable. Velocity is in the Y. Our slope then, M, is our acceleration. Our X variable then is time. And our initial intercept here would be the initial velocity that the object has. In this case, the object is traveling at zero meters per second initially. So this equation is so important, it's given a special name. And I'm gonna box it here for you. It's given a special name. We call that the how fast equation. Now, do you understand why we might call it the how fast equation? It can tell us how fast an object is going. If we know how much time it was traveling, and if we know the acceleration, and if we know the initial velocity. Well, let's say that this object continues to accelerate for a few more seconds. So let's say maybe t is eight seconds. So we could say, well, how fast is the car going at eight seconds? Well, the final velocity, make sure this is getting on here, then is equal to our slope. We said that was 10 meters per second, per second, times eight seconds, that's our t, plus then our initial velocity, but that was zero meters per second. Notice then one of your seconds cancels, and you're left with 10 times eight, or 80 meters per second. Okay, that was a pretty easy example, right? But that's how we use the how fast equation. Final velocity then is the acceleration, the slope of the diagonal on a VT graph times the time plus any initial velocity. If our initial velocity is zero, then we don't need to really do much with that term. Well, let's move on to page two here. And I wanna introduce then a new kind of graph here for you. And notice that, notice then that the slope here, the slope that we had here stays constant, right? The acceleration was equal to 10. So that slope again on a diagonal stays constant. So we can now fill out that column. Our acceleration is constant through those five seconds. Well, we can then graph then what's called an acceleration time graph, right? So the acceleration stays constant at 10, right? That was the slope that we got on the VT graph. And it stays constant. So that just would be a horizontal line, right? This is again what's called an AT graph, acceleration and time. All right, does that idea kind of make sense there? Well, let's go kind of back to, let's kind of go back to our velocity time graph. Here was our VT graph. And then I just redrew it right here, all right? So the question is, can we get how far, we know how fast the car's going. We have our how fast equation. But can we get kind of how far does the car move in a given time? Well. Let's say we want to say, well, how far does the car move in one second? Okay, well, do you remember here that we could take our VT graph and we can create an area, right? We did this with our VT graph with objects moving constant speed, right? I showed you that in the notes, that the area, the area here on a VT graph is how far, or the displacement, right? That was the displacement. So we can use areas here, but notice we get different shapes. We get triangles here, right? Does that idea make sense? You can see that, right? We have triangles. But we know, we kind of know that the area of a triangle, the area of a triangle, which then is really equal to how far, 
or the displacement, the area of a triangle is one half base times the height of the triangle. Okay, you guys kind of know that equation, right? One half BH. So the displacement here, how far? In one second, the base of the triangle is one. So the area then for one second, the base of the triangle is one and the height is 10. So one half times 10 would be equal then to five. So how far does the car move in one second? Five meters. So we can kind of put that down here in one, in, on this graph, on one second, the car moves five meters. Now let's try it for two seconds. One half times, so now my area is a little bit larger, right? So one half times the base, two, times the height is 20. So now my car, so by the end of two seconds, where is my car? Well, I'm 20 meters away from where I started. Now, this area thing is good, but there's actually a physics equation that we can kind of come up with. And I want to kind of work with you. It's a little complicated, but I want to work with you on that. So the displacement then, the area, the displacement or the area, we said, oops, let me spell it right, is one half BH. But what exactly is the base here? What concept, what variable? Well, the base is time. So we can write th rewrite this one half T, okay? One half T times H. Well, what exactly is the H? Well, that H then, that H really then represents how fast the car moves. So this line segment really is how fast the car moves relative to how, how fast it was going initially. That would be this Y axis here, right? So we can say that's really VF minus VI. That, does that concept kind of make sense? VF minus VI? And that's going to really equal to your displacement. Well, that's XF minus XI, or that's really equal to your delta X. Remember, X is the symbol for how far, right? That position. Well, let's try to do a little simplifying here. We saw then on this page, the first page, that VF minus VI, VF minus VI is AT. Well, we have VF minus VI, so what we can do is substitute AT in there, and look what we have, one half T AT. <clears throat> And that's going to equal to your delta x, or your displacement. Well, look, we have two t's. So what are we going to do with that? Well, t times a t is a t squared. So one half a t squared. <clears throat> that equals to your delta x. Okay, I'm going to kind of box this too, because this is a real famous equation. It's our how far equation. It's not really complete yet. I'm going to talk about making it a little bit better. Um, on the next few pages. But look at what we have here. We now have a variable that's squared. Well, a variable that's squared makes a different type of graph than a variable that's not squared. So we've got these first two points. Let's try now three. So we'd say one half A. Well, our A, we said, was 10 meters per second squared. So that's 10 meters per second per second and our time then represents three seconds but we need to square everything right so we will have one half times ten times nine now we got two seconds being squared and they'll cancel out there and we're left in with meters which is a distance idea so one half times ten times nine ninety half of ninety is forty five so in three seconds the car's gone 45 meters. Now let's do four seconds. One half 
times 10, okay, 1 half times 10 times 4 squared. Well, 4 squared is 16. So 1 half times 10 times 16, well, that then becomes 5 times 16, or that's 80 meters. Finally, we get then 5, 1 half times 10 times 5 squared. That's 25 there, so 1 half, 5 times 25 is 125. Notice, look at this shape here. Okay, that's not a line. So this is saying our car goes further and further each successive time intervals. In the first second, we've gone 5 meters. In the next second, we've gone 20, which is 15 meters further than what I did before. Time interval, I'm going further and further. That's what we mean by positive acceleration, right? This shape is a parabola. Okay, it's, it's one part of a parabola. We're not going to see that left side because we don't have negative time. But this is a top opening parabola. It's one of our key graphs. And it's telling us then that at a car speed varies linearly, right? This is a line graph on a VT graph. So a car speed varies linearly, but it's how farness or its distance or displacement then moves parabolically or due to a square in the equation. We're going to do a little bit more of this shortly. But let's just do one more thing here. Let's say we allow the car to go eight seconds. You know, we know then on page one at eight seconds, it's going to travel at, at 80 meters per second velocity. But how far did it go in eight seconds? Well, one half times the acceleration times eight squared. So we have one half times 10 is five times 64. Right, you may need a calculator for that. Five times 64, I do. So that's 320. So in eight seconds, the car has moved 320 meters. Okay? Okay, I'm gonna do more later. Talk to you later, kids, bye.